Hello internet people and welcome back to another edition of Hashtag Friday Sews. As you can see, I'm in a new location this week. I'm about two feet to the right of where I normally sit because today is the day. Today is the day you have all been on the edge of your seats for since last Friday when I didn't tell you which sewing machine that I bought. But today, all will be revealed and I haven't even opened the box so that I could share the joy of opening a brand new sewing machine with you. My dear internet people, it's currently right here. My cat has currently made a bed on top of it and I'm looking forward to showing you that I got a... Just kidding, you didn't think it was gonna be that easy, did you? So let's play a little game to see if you can guess which machine I got. I'm gonna give you three clues. And for those three clues, I'm gonna to have to take you to my kitchen. Now each clue represents a different part of the brand and the model name. So let's see if you can get it. Clue number one. Clue number two. Oh wait, hold on. This isn't a clue, I just got hungry. Clue number three. Were you able to guess? Did you figure it out? If you figured it out, let me know in the comments below and you get a gold star from me to you. And you can pin it right here. If you didn't get it, don't worry. I told my husband the clues and he was also really confused, so it's just a big confusing mess. So let me actually tell you what machine I got. I got the Juki HCL F300 and it came with a cat. Now do the clues make sense? So the first clue was Japanese green tea. Juki is a Japanese country. Country? It's a Japanese corporation. Fun fact, this cat was also born in Japan. HCL reminded me of hazelnuts. So hazelnut butter. F and three, it's supposed to be, it's F300, that's the model. But I did 300 grams of frozen fruit. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You get it now? Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm going to open this now. Are you ready? It's completely sealed. I've been sitting and staring at this box all week long, dying to open it, but I couldn't do that without you. So um, my loyalty is strong, and now we're going to open it. So kitty, hey, Ace, can we open the box now? I promise you'll have more fun playing inside the box than you will sitting on top of the box, okay? How can I possibly kick him off of the box? Just kidding, you gotta go. Okay, off. He's back on top of the box. Now there's cat hair all over it. It's just like everything else in my life. There's just cat hair all over everything. Okay, all right. Oh. Hey, here, you can watch me unbox it here. Are you ready? Are you ready? Do you want to see what's inside? Not only is there tape on it, there's also staples. It is stapled shut. Oh boy. Oh, this is dangerous. Oh, okay. like booby trapped or something. Oh, oh. It's here. Oh. Oh. I almost don't want to take it out of the box because it's so perfect in here already. Okay, packaging, packaging. case. This is the case. Oh, I'm getting, oh no, my clothes are stuck on the staples. Okay. All right. Okay. That was the case. And the machine, 
on. It's here. Oh my God, it's heavy. Okay. All right. Let's move more packaging. Oop. Excuse me. Okay, are you ready? All right, you, hey, okay. You can, oh, you wanna play in the styrofoam? Okay, he's gonna play in the styrofoam. All right, here it is. Voila! This is the Juki HCL F300. Wow, it's so beautiful. Okay, I know that my cat is gonna wanna jump in this box, and so I'm going to deal with this giant staple weapons on the outside so that when he jumps in, he doesn't hurt himself. I'll be back. Here she is. She's just been born, 21 pounds, 17 inches long. Actually, maybe it's 18 inches long. Don't quote me on that. Have to look up the specs online. Well, look at her, she's so shiny. So let me tell you a little bit about why I chose this machine over all the other great machines out there, and there are so many. Uh, basically, it came down to a combination of price, size, features and not overthinking it. I wanted something about $500, but I was willing to go up to 700. I knew I wanted a computerized machine. I knew I wanted something focused on garment sewing. I don't quilt, so I don't really need any of the features that quilters like in their machines. I wanted a machine that made really good buttonholes because that is always a problem. I also wanted to make sure that I had a really good feed system. When I first started looking at machines, I was pretty enamored with the FAF IDT walking foot, the built-in walking foot, and I wanted something that was going to feed well, whether that was from a built-in walking foot or like this machine has the box feed system. So when it came down to it, I felt like this was the best choice that I could get for my money. So I have kind of a soft spot for Juki machines. I learned to sew on the industrial Juki machines. And I know Juki likes to say that they bring an industrial touch to the home sewing market. So whether or not that's just marketing, sounds good to me. Um, if there are any industrial features to this machine, that would be great. Um, when I was Googling, I did a lot of Googling um, you know, what sewing machines are best for garment sewing. And the F600 actually came up a lot. Now this is the Juki Exceed series. There's the 300, the 400, and the 600, all at different price points. The 600 is the most expensive and the 300 is the least expensive and that's the one that I got here. Because the F600 came up a lot, I really started looking into this series and found out that the only main difference between the different machines are um, basically the number of stitches and the accessories that come with it and other than that the actual machine is pretty much the same I think the 600 the 400 and the 600 come with an extension table they come with a knee lift they obviously have more decorative stitches and I think the 600 has another light and it has knobs here for the stitch width and the stitch length and I decided that I didn't really need all those bells and whistles um, so I got the lowest priced machine of the series, the F300. And I thought I'd probably be getting a pretty good machine if they are all the same and people say that the F600 is really good for garment sewing. Another thing that a lot of people said about this machine was the buttonholes are really good. And apparently they have like a sensor you plug in the buttonhole uh, attachment to and it senses the size of the button and it makes the buttons and apparently it's kind of an industrial feature, so apparently it makes really good buttonholes. So that remains to be seen, but I was influenced by it. So I think that's really it. Oh, also it has a box feed system. So normally feed dogs move in like an oval shape when they are moving the fabric through. And this Juki, and there's other machines that have this as well, but they move in more of a box shape. And so apparently it keeps contact with the fabric longer and helps feed it through more evenly. So I was really um, interested in that feature as well. Other than that, good buttonholes. Seems like it has a good feed system. It's a Juki, Juki's a good brand. I'm on board with it. Um, that's good price, 21 pounds, a little bit bigger than I wanted, but actually it's not bad, not bad at all. We'll see what it looks like when it actually gets up into the loft but I'll deal with it. Um, I think that's it. So I tried not to overthink it too much. I tried not to do too, too much research. I read a lot of reviews on Pattern Review and other places on the internet, 
and looked at all the different features and this is what we came up with. So this is my new machine. The big question now is what should I name it? I have Stella the Singer, I have Kenny the Kenmore, and I have Denim Star. Um, maybe it'll be a J name, I don't know. If you have any ideas, let me know. Uh, we'll have to see what it sews like and if any personality uh, comes out while it's sewing and if it's a boy or a girl. We don't know that either. So we'll see. What do you say? Should we fire it up, take it for a test drive? Well, not really a test drive since I already bought it. It's mine. Um, but should we fire it up and see how it sews? Okay, so I'm going to change the camera angle and we'll plug it in and get it going. All right, here we go. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. It's time to flip the switch on. Oh, oh, hello. Hi. It said hello. Did you see that? It greeted me. It said hi. As Betty Draper would say, it's like the cockpit of a jet. I'm literally scared to do anything because it's so fancy. I don't want to mess anything up. If you know that reference, thumbs up. Okay, so I just enabled the bobbin winder and it just like automatically goes. You don't have to do anything. I wasn't even expecting it. Okay, watch. You just go like this and it just starts winding. I'm not pressing the pedal or anything. Oh my gosh. The technology. Wow. Okay, let's try the automatic needle threader. What? 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 Wow. Oh my gosh, it's threaded. Meanwhile, my cat's made a home inside the styrofoam. So apparently with this machine, you don't need to actually pull up the bobbin thread to start sewing. You can just start sewing. So I guess that means we are at the moment where we try it out. I'm gonna leave you guys right there so you can get a good view. Oh, I'm nervous, oh my gosh. Ah. But I'm guessing you can just lower the presser foot and start sewing, I guess. Okay, ready, oh my God, it's going. Okay. Oh my God, it's going, it's going, I'm sewing. It's happening, oh my God. Okay, Ooh. okay, it's on the slowest setting. So it's going very slow despite pressing the pedal all the way. On the front, I'll show you in a second, there's a turtle and a hair so you can adjust the sewing speed. Okay, I guess that's good. Okay, so now you trim it. So I think we push this button here. Oh, you can't see it. Okay, so there's you can adjust the sewing speed here. Turtle, obviously slow. Hair, fast. So I was going on the slowest. And then now I think if you press this button, oh my God, it cuts for you. What is this witchcraft? There it is. Oh my God, look at that. Oh, the tension. Oh no. Oh, that's not good. Okay, the back tension does not look that good compared to the front. Oh no, I was trying to get over tension issues. So I've heard that these machines actually need like time to, I don't know, settle in. And at the beginning you can kind of have tension issues. So you can see here this bobbin tension does not look quite as good as the top. But yeah, I've heard that they need time to adjust to their new homes, get settled in, and then they work properly. But I actually am gonna go through and just 
double check that I have everything threaded properly because you never know. Okay, so obviously if you need me, I will be here playing with this machine all weekend. I obviously have a lot to learn, a lot to read. I'm gonna read the manual like a book. I have this feeling that like, it's like a fresh start. Like I have a new machine, everything. I don't know, it's like a fresh start, you know, and I wanna do it right. I wanna like read everything about it. I wanna make sure I do it everything properly. I want to really like learn the stitches and learn how to use the machine and the feet. And oh, I am going to have to, because I remember I was saying I got the lower end of the series. I am going to have to purchase a few extra accessories. Like it doesn't even come with the auxiliary spool pin for like twin needling, which I'm going to have to do that. And maybe someday I'll buy the knee lift and the extension table and probably more feet. Um, but I think for I don't know, seems like this is definitely an upgrade. Um, it has automatic needle threading. It automatically trims. I think there's like an automatic lock stitch, like a back stitch on it. It has like a hundred something um, stitches. Oh, it has fonts. You can like monogram things. Like, you guys, this is a whole new world for me. Today is the beginning of the rest of my life. There's not very many things in life that um, give you that feeling, but I think upgrading your sewing machine is definitely one of them. So anyways, uh, that's all I really have for you for Friday Sews. That's the most exciting thing I have going on. Obviously, new machine takes pre precedence over everything else. Um, I didn't sew anything this week. I cut out a pattern, but that was it. Nobody cares about that when you have a new machine. I don't care. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear about that. So um, anyways, I hope you guys have a good weekend. I hope you have some fun sewing projects planned. Oh, also, I wanted to tell you to make sure to check out the Friday Sews hashtag. If you just type, sorry, I just hit the table. If you type in hashtag Friday Sews in the YouTube search and then sort by upload date, you'll see all of um, today's Friday Sews videos. And then, you know, as you scroll down, it'll get into past Friday Sews. So make sure to check out all the amazing YouTube sewing people out there. I love them all and I try to watch all of them, but I don't have a ton. I don't have endless amounts of time to watch YouTube. So yeah. Anyways, I'm going to be here playing with my machine for the rest of the weekend. And, um, yeah, I hope you have a good weekend. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.